Hey guys, Dora here, and this time I really want to discuss something with you guys, specifically exotic versus ascended gear in raids. What you will be seeing on the screen is a full and uncut spirit veil run with a tiny twist, which I'll explain in a second. Some parts have been sped up for your viewing pleasure as the run took approximately an hour and 30 minutes with breaks in between, so yeah. This video will be long. I will discuss several aspects of this specific run, the thought process behind it, and so on, as well as go over some of the community concerns regarding raids in Guild Wars 2. All boss encounters will have you muted, don't worry, so you can focus on how we did the different encounters, but in between the encounters is where I'll be discussing these topics. If you just want to watch the different boss kills, here are some annotations you can click. I'll put different annotations in between so you can skip the boss kills as well. You can also find those uh, in the description down below for those of you on mobile devices. All right, so the formal stuff out of the way, let's get into it. So the other day I got a mail from Terrakin who diligently explained his current situation in Guild Wars 2. In short, he told me that he had started out playing Guild Wars 2 quite early on as he had moved on from Warhammer Online and World of Warcraft. In Guild Wars, he had found quite a strong affinity for World vs. World. Unfortunately, even though he really liked the game, he'd been somewhat forced into a two-year break from Guild Wars 2 due to unfortunate circumstances. Now, over two years, the game has evolved quite a bit. The world has changed, the content has changed, and most importantly for this topic, the meta has changed. And so he wrote, The reason why I'm writing in the first place is not to tell you my story, but to purpose you a challenge. It might not be the most interesting, but I imagine that it would influenced the community quite a bit. It came to me after I saw your guild doing Gorsival while not using updrafts. I and a lot of the community are wondering if raids are doable in full exotics. I, for one, know from WoW background that the enraged timers are no problem at all in Guild Wars 2. So I challenge you to try the raid out in all exotic 10-man party. That means no ascended armor, weapons, or accessory items. I understand that it is quite a lot of gold spent for no gain to you, but I imagine that there are thousands of people who would be thrilled to see that. All the best and good luck in the next wing. And so naturally, I accepted the challenge. So to explain the situation here, because my guildmates and I added a few more rules to the challenge. Every single member of the squad you see in this video is wearing full exotic gear. That means every single piece of armor, every weapon and all accessories are of exotic quality. The rules were to bring either Crafted armor with no new stat combinations, that meant no vipers, commanders, zealots, and so on for the stats introduced with Heart of Thorns. You could also bring armor bought from dungeon tokens or armor bought with World vs. World badges. Budget runes and sigils, meaning no runes along the lines of superior leadership or sigils of concentration. And at the bottom line, every member of the squad could not spend over 100 gold on a single gear set. Oh yeah, and it wasn't allowed to transmute the gear either. As for traits, everything was obviously allowed, but we didn't feel like we'd want to simply cheese some boss tactics by for example, overloading Gorsival with burning to kill him in 3 minutes and 30 seconds again. No, we wanted to specifically show that a decent, steady tactic would still work with exotic gear. Links to everyone's build can be found in the description down below. That said, I have to highlight this to an extreme degree. This entire run is nothing more than an experiment to show that it is possible to overcome the raid bosses by sheer practice and skill alone. Every single member that you see in this party have practiced the mechanics of the raid extensively since its release, to the point where we could keep up optimal damage output regardless of our lower statistical chance of survival. I will not, in general, recommend anyone doing the raid in Exotic Gear as a group going in on their first run, regardless of what I'm about to show you, as even we were surprised at the tuning of some of the rage timers, which is something I'll discuss more on in a bit. In general, this is simply to highlight the fact that you don't necessarily need to be extremely selective towards that one guy in your party who happens to have exotic gear, but is generally really good at the game. Raids are extremely binary. Either you make it or you don't. Every class is basically viable, though of course some classes might do some things faster than others. More often than not though, it's not about the perfect gear or trade allocation that you brought to the fight, it's more about the individual player skill level. So with the premise of the situation out of the way, let's 
start out by taking a look at the Veil Guardian.
good enough. Um, it, it was good enough to kill it, that's what I mean, alright? Now, full transparency here, going into this fight where you were still lolling about a bit too much and thus missed a few things to the point where it almost looked laughable that we actually succeeded. Honestly, we did consider just redoing it immediately, but I decided to keep it in. Not to encourage people to necessarily accept mistakes, since most players encountering a situation like we did would perhaps decide to simply wipe it. I figured that to a certain degree, it would also show how far practice can get a team in terms of general overview of the situation. We all knew that we wouldn't at all fail simply due to players getting downed early on, as long as we got them up in time, which we did. Our final time on the Veil Guardian had about 30 seconds left, but I'd like to point out that that wasn't due to the exotic gear, it was simply due to our own mistakes. We actually did a run the day before in exotic gear, with about a minute and a half left on the timer, also in exotic gear. The rage timer for the Veil Guardian is quite lenient to be honest, we just had a bad run to begin with. Anyhow. From here on, we picked up the slack, so don't expect much more clumsiness to appear in this video. So to begin the actual discussion, one of the things that I want to discuss with you guys is the accessibility of Ascended Gear. For the more experienced veterans of the game, Ascended Gear should not be a problem regardless of your current economic standings. At the launch of Heart of Thorns, the entirety of my guild had, due to our strong affection towards fractals, filled numerous characters with at least one full Ascended set. I myself had 5 out of 9 characters with Ascended gear, 3 of which had either 2 or 3 individual sets. On top of that, I had a full bank tab of Ascended armor boxes as well as half a bank tab of Ascended weapon boxes. These were basically just lying around, which meant that my new main character, my Revenant, immediately and currently has 3 full sets of Ascended armor with numerous different weapons and trinkets. This isn't to show off in any way, it's just to highlight the fact that my stance on the matter may be somewhat clouded in regards to the more casual players of the game, since I haven't actually crafted an ascended piece in over a year I believe, and still I have an abundance of them. But regardless, I'm still not blind. Currently the exact boxes that I'm referring to now have indeed been called away from the various loot tables, but most notably from the fractal rewards. On top of that, there's currently a widespread and extremely damaging unrest in the economy. Currently what we're seeing on the market is an artificial price inflation all around, which is due to the overabundance of new stuff that has been introduced with Heart of Thorns, all requiring massive amounts of extremely rare items. The inflation though is most likely powered by the economical powerhouses within the community, especially guilds aiming to level up their guild halls. Actually, what the market is experiencing right now is a massive deflation of gold. The introduction of map-wide currency has shifted the playing field immensely. The majority of players haven't actually seen any real income since the launch of the expansion because we're all driven into these new wondrous zones with barely any market value. We're getting account bound materials and account locked currency en masse, but we still want all those shinies. Thus, there's a massive price inflation in the purchasing value of these shinies, which causes the majority of the community to slowly but steadily lose more and more gold on a daily basis, which causes the actual gold value to deflate, meaning currently until the market settles, it's basically only the rich that can get the super shinies, let alone a full new ascended set. Now with the introduction of raids and Crystal Reed's statement that earlier wing bosses can probably be killed by top tier players in a mix of ascended and exotic gear, but that last boss should be full ascended, it was clearly stated by ArenaNet that regardless of the cost, players would still be expected to require it to even play the content. This has resulted in a somewhat bitter tone throughout parts of the community as it added further cost and time to achieve optimal play. On top of that, for a long time, Ascended Gear was perceived to only be for those players who wanted to min-max their playtime to the extreme. Till now, not a whole lot of players have felt as forced, if I may, as they do now. Now, I'll be quite straightforward with you guys. In my opinion, Spirit Veil vale could have been tuned a whole lot more tight, and I honestly hope that future Raid Wings will be much more demanding in terms of actually bringing Ascended Gear to the Endeavor. Because, well, 
spoiler alert for this entire video, we did manage to beat the entire raid with exotic gear. The biggest noticeable difference in Ascended versus exotic gear though was that with exotic gear, we could not afford to lose a single party member on either Gorsival or Sabatha, especially not Sabatha, before we at least hit a significant health marker. Internally, we actually believe that Gorsival was the most fine-tuned boss in regards to gear, as it very much seemed to initially have been designed to be a simple party-wide DPS check. But, well, let's take a look.
With exactly 9 seconds left on the Enrage timer, it turns out that Gorsaval is a DPS check for an optimal exotic party with a decent strategy at hand. Who <laughs> would have known, right? Don't get me wrong, the mechanics of Gorsaval is definitely not something to be taken lightly. You constantly have to be aware of your surroundings, but once you've got that down, it's basically just about constantly staying on him to slash out as much damage as possible. Honestly, to me, personally, this was a bit of a letdown to realize. Let me explain. I'm personally in favor of Guild Wars 2 getting some much needed actual challenging content, regardless of the inherent cost to the community. I can especially not empathize with the part of the community saying that they find it destructive to the game as a whole to include such things as lore into content that not all players will be able to complete. To that argument, I have nothing else to say than practice makes perfect, or to paraphrase, get good mate. Because on the flip side of this argument, we are lucky enough in this community to actually have content creators who would love to share these lore tidbits with the entire community. You may be lucky enough to have friends who have completed the wing who can allow you to enter their instance and check all the lore bits for yourself. It is such a marginal piece of the actual lore that is actually tied into the encounters themselves. The rest is directly accessible through notes and NPCs who are always around. So to me, looking at this, the two mighty pillars of the complaints I've seen around regarding raids should, especially after the demonstration you're currently watching, dissipate, as there should no longer be a reason to complain about the gear, and there should absolutely not exist any complaint about the inaccessibility of the lore. And that's without even mentioning the loot, which Arena had handled so, so perfectly for the raid. That said, quite honestly, I hope for dear life that in future wings we'll see much tighter in rage timers than we are currently seeing. Don't get me wrong, it was tough beating the raid for the first time around. It took us about a week to complete, but compared to, for example, the raids in World of Warcraft, a week for a raid wing is like child's play. Now I can fully understand the reasoning behind Arena's decision to perhaps make the first wing and perhaps the remaining two wings of this specific raid to be a bit less demanding than, say, World of Warcraft. Because if they had introduced a raid which literally required perfect gameplay, with up to a month's worth of beating our heads against the content before even getting the first kill, then the entire Guild Wars 2 community would have suffered from an extreme culture shock beyond savior, since the vast majority of the player base has, for three years straight, been used to extremely casual gameplay. What we see right now, with complaints here and there, is only part of an ongoing acclimatization to the fact that ArenaNet also wants to cater to a small segment of their community, the hardcore players. The only way to do that is to ease the rest of the community into the idea that extremely hard content is also extremely beneficial for the community and the game as a whole. And so in that regard, Spirit Veil has been quite decently balanced in my opinion, but I would strongly recommend ArenaNet to not stay at this level of balance, as well as I would recommend players to seek out their own betterment in-game instead of advocating a rollback to an extremely flawed and face roll level of balance. We do not want our hardcore content to not be hardcore. You should not expect life to hand you lemons so that you can make lemonade. You should go and beat your head against that damn lemon tree if you actually want that damn fruit to drop. But then again, that's just my personal opinion. Feel free to disagree and hit that dislike button or downvote or whatever you feel like, but all I want for this game is for it to keep the quality high or else we might not see it last as long as we would want it to. Alright, that thought aside, let's discuss the final encounter. Now, Sabatha was actually the boss that surprised us the most, both positively and negatively actually. Because first off, as I stated earlier, Crystal Reed did indeed go on record to say that the final boss should require Ascendant Gear. Fact is, it doesn't. 
But then again, perhaps she was referring to the final raid wings, which we haven't seen yet. They haven't been released yet, so let's not dwell on that, shall we? Secondly, with Ascendant Gear, my group had actually managed to beat Sabatha with 2 minutes and 20 seconds left on the rage timer. We've even managed to basically beat her with a dead player for 75% of the fight, which is why we honestly believe that Gorsevel would be the biggest DPS check. Well, turns out we were wrong. In an earlier attempt with Exotic Gear than the one you're currently watching, we actually realized that we could only push her to 5% health unless every single player stayed alive for the entirety of the fight. It simply wasn't possible for us to do it without everyone being on their A plus game. That said, let's watch the final kill.
conclusion, Spirit Veil vale is definitely possible to complete in full exotic gear for the entire party, and we did it with 53 seconds left on the clock. We even beat every single boss in one run with all 10 members alive for the finale. But it does require A plus gameplay from everyone. It really does. So here's some advice, because watching guides, copying builds, and traits does not, I repeat, it does not necessarily grant you a good enough statistical chance of you succeeding. What does give you that extra edge in any encounter is for you to be self-critical of your own gameplay, your skills, your traits, your gear, your movement, your damage rotation, your reaction time. Will you be fast enough to get to that green circle? Can you reliably say that you can avoid destroying your entire party with a time bomb on Sabatha? Critical self-reflectiveness is key to overcoming anything, be that in a video game or in real life. In this specific case, it's not about having the best gear or the most optimal class. Any class will do, really. It's about bringing the player or being the player with the right mentality. Finally, i love to give an extremely big thank you to all my guildmates who helped me make this possible. Shout out to Thorian, Particular, Iliavi, Boven, Flames, Sam, Felix, Vendiri, Luquatic, Veg, and Ilisaria. Without you guys to invest your hard earned gold in this silly experiment, it obviously wouldn't have been possible. And to you guys, thank you all for watching. Until next time, I will see you in the mists.